So welcome to worship. God, you called and prepared your people through John, a strange man in a strange place. May we, living in strange times, gather to worship you. You who calls all kinds of people to gather together, turning towards the eternal word that does not fade and that welcomes all, making strangers friends forever. Amen. Let us pray. Throughout time, people have journeyed to deserted places to seek wisdom. Gathered here today, forced to journey into isolation, lockdown and COVID restriction tears, may we move towards the things that will last forever. Righteousness, loving kindness, peace and an eternal home in God who calls all things towards the fullness of life. God, you bring all together. In you, love and perseverance meet. Goodness and peace kiss. May we find ways to be brought together so that we can walk alongside each other on your pathway of delight. We have heard your call coming from strange places. We have received your gift calling us into unexpected connections. We have been nurtured by your invitation, making friendships along the way. We approach you now with humble hearts and expectation, knowing you welcome all, stranger and friend. We have looked at the rough and judged it for not being smooth. We have looked at the valley and thought that it could not be raised. We have observed the mountain, believing it would be unscalable. And in doing so, we have become complacent. Forgive us, God, for our complacency and our judgments, making us see with the eyes of a journeyman, knowing that you who have called us on this way will make pathways before us. God, you have given each of us each other and showed us how to make connections, even when we thought it was not possible. You have given purpose for bewilderment, rest for tiredness, and company for isolation. You have gathered your people in the eternal place of love. You speak to our hearts, and you forgive us our wandering ways. So we praise you, for the goodness that you are and the pathways that you make before us. Amen. Let's unmute and join together in the Lord's Prayer. So we pray. Our Father, Amen. who art Amen. in heaven, hallowed be your name. name. Your kingdom, kingdom come, come. the will be done, done. Earth, 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 give us today, today, our daily bread, our daily bread. Our daily bread. Our give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil, yours is the kingdom, and the power of the Lord, Amen. Amen. The reading is from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 to 11. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places are plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. 
The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of the, our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. We're going to our breakout rooms now. And when we get into the breakout rooms, the questions will appear for discussion there. But just in case you don't see the questions, they are this. What has come from 2020 that gives you hope? What has come from 2020 that gives you hope? What might we carry into 2021 that gives us hope? And what might you do in 2021 that could be a source of hope for others? So what has given you hope this year? What might you take into next year that gives hope? And how might you be a source of hope for others in the coming year? So I'll open the breakout rooms now. From Mark chapter one, verses one to eight. <clears throat> John the Baptist prepares the way. The beginning of the gospel about Jesus Christ, the son of God. It is written in Isaiah, the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John came baptizing in the desert region and preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me will come one more powerful than I, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I will baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. Our planet is broken. The Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio, Antonio Gutierrez, has warned us. Humanity is waging what he describes as a suicidal war on the natural world. Nature always strikes back and is doing so with gathering force and fury, he told a BBC special event on the environment. The General Secretary went on to say that he was putting tackling climate change at the heart of the UN's global mission. In his speech titled State of the Planet, he announced that its central objective next year will be to build a global coalition around the need to re reduce emissions to net zero. We face, he said, a moment of truth. Wow, okay then. And there's me thinking that the global pandemic was all I had to worry about. Oh, and the outcome of tomorrow's Brexit negotiations. It's been a heady year, hasn't it? I don't know about you, but I need a little bit of hope. Well, here's some reasons for hope. Apple, one of the most powerful companies on the planet, has published its first ever policy on human rights. Procter & Gamble, a massive global company, is scaling back the amount of ch child and forced labour used to produce palm oil. That's right, they used slaves. And PepsiCo has followed suit. The European Central Bank has put climate at the top of its political agenda. Denmark has ceased all exploration for new oil and gas reserves in the North Sea. Will the United Kingdom follow suit as it seeks to lead by example at the International Climate Conference? 
that the UK and Italy are hosting in Glasgow New Year, in, sorry, next year. And Marcus Rashford, now famous and now rich, but originally a black boy from a Manchester council estate, has shown the privileged white boys from Eton how to spell compassion, imagination, and most recently, education. Now, all these things are very worthwhile and will make a difference for good. But they're all a little bit impersonal, if I'm honest, a bit remote, a little bit out there. I need something a little bit closer. What about our second reading? Good old Mark, you can rely on him to tell it as it is. He says, see, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And all this hard work is preceded by the line, the beginning of the good news. Hang on a minute. The beginning of the good news, the voice of one crying out in a wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. How on earth is that hopeful? It just sounds like more hard work and isolation. Come on, Mark, give us a break here. We're struggling, fella. The beginning of the good news. So there is a journey to go on to get to good news. There are still more days closed on my advent calendar than there are open. Mary and Joseph are on a journey. The UK is moving towards getting a vaccine in a surgery near you. We're on a journey. Churches are considering and reconsidering what they should look and feel like after COVID. We are on a journey. It's a process, but it's not a quick change like flicking a light switch. Let me give you an example that's on a much smaller scale that's perhaps easier to conceptualize. Working as I have been more often than not at my desk rather than out and about over the two lockdowns, I've developed what can only be described as aches and pains. I've got a, a poorly shoulder, or it began as a poorly shoulder, and then it's worked its way up my neck and into the back of my head. And if I'm honest, it's due to sitting still, slumped at my desk, staring into a screen, and not getting out on my hind legs and getting some exercise done. And if I'm honest, I've been 38 for several years now, and I might be starting to feel the onset of years. Hey ho things are catching up with me. So by late afternoon, I'm even more grumpy than I am normally. In fact, I'm such a grumpy toad that I'm getting hard to live with. So in the interest of extending my life expectancy in the domestic situation, if you know what I'm saying, I went to the doctors and the doctors referred me to a physiotherapist and the physiotherapist has given me a 12 week course of exercise. Great. It appears that lifting a mug of tea every half an hour isn't sufficient. So I've got 12 weeks of pain, discomfort, and having to make an increasing effort, being persistent, and eventually, hopefully, building up strength where I've lost it and returning to health. I have a journey to make, and we all have a journey. I want to get to that place where I don't have pain, but according to the doctor, they can't just write a prescription and there you go, it's sorted. I have to help myself. And this is what our gospel reading is about. There is good news, but there is a journey to be made first. Now, I recently came across a psychological theory of hope, which is something I wasn't particularly looking for, but the psychological theory of hope goes like this. Hope is possible where there are pathways or choices about achieving your goal. In other words, when you don't have any choices, then how can you have any hope? So 
So that's the first thing. You need pathways or choices about achieving life's goals. But you also need agency or the power to make one of those pathways reality. So even if I've got choices, if I am unable to enact any of them, then I still have no hope. So to flourish, we need choices and the power to make those choices real. In a Zoom meeting, someone was heard to say plaintively, at the end of the day on Zoom, all I long for is flesh and bone. And I think we all understand that feeling. We love the fact that we can connect with one another via Zoom, but we would so much rather be able to see each other safely, to share a handshake or a hug, to look one another properly in the eye rather than stare into a camera or a screen. We need that human contact, that real physical embodied love and compassion. It's a relief, I think, to find that the gift of love made flesh and bone, love incarnate, is at the heart of the Christian Christmas gospel. Here's the contemporary English version of John chapter 1 verse 14. The word became a human being and lived here with us. We saw his true glory, the glory of the only Son of the Father. From him all kindness and all the truth of God have come down to us. Grace, truth and love are embodied and made tangible in Jesus, come down for us. Here is a gift of hope we all need right now. We have gathered around stories of strange people in wild places. That is the story of, the, of John the Baptist. But he points to Christ. He points to the love of God made real in a human being in the person of Jesus Christ. And as we open those doors on our advent calendar, as we eat those bits of chocolate or whatever we do, we mark the days, we engage with the journey and we draw closer, not only to the ickle bickle, tiny weeny baby Jesus, but to the man, the human being like you and I who embodied all that love and compassion and true humanity can be. So as we journey through Advent, let us live in the hope that we can be like Christ. We can live like Christ. Amen. Our music group is going to play the hymn, The Lord's My Shepherd. And I've chosen that this morning because it speaks of rich pastoral scenes of good grazing and and to me it's it, it there is imagery of abundance and of nurture and of safety and as we live in this time of isolation and this almost desert time this wilderness time when it comes to feeling nurtured and feeling safe it gives me an image of hope to look towards and to work towards Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Let us pray. We pray for those lost in the valleys. May they be lifted up. We pray for those stuck in the heights. May they be helped down. We pray for those in barren places. May they find shelter. For those in rough places, may they hear eternal words. For those seeking forgiveness, may they find it. For those seeking apology, may they hear it. For those waiting for a long time, may they find patience in your patience. And for those waiting for renewal, may there be springs of growth. Amen. Our next hymn is Before the Throne. And this might be not, not so familiar, but I think we will be able to worship God through it. And it embodies for me a sense of hope that in God, there is hope. Whatever our circumstances, we can find hope in God. So let's listen and sing to Before the Throne. So, a quick reminder of some of the conversations that you might have had in the breakout rooms. What might you do in 2021, and indeed in the rest of 2020, to be a source of hope for others? What might you do to be a source of hope for others, the challenge for our coming week? So let us go now with God. Let us be human to those we meet and may the hope of Christ be within us. Seek and see God in those around you, and as you do so, may you embody faith, hope, and love, as you live in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Three gifts, one source, never ending. Stay safe, live love. Amen. <laughs>